Und da sind wir wieder bei Three Hopes, Leute. Ihr wisst, was ansteht. Wir sind kurz vor der nächsten Hauptmission. Und das bedeutet, wir haben wieder eine ganze Menge an Supports, die wir uns natürlich ansehen wollen. Es ist heute außerdem natürlich ein ganz besonderer Tag, denn es wurde ja ein neues Fire Emblem angekündigt. Engage. Ähm, ich werde mich dazu separat nochmal äußern, aber <lacht> ich bin nicht erfreut und keineswegs Hype. So viel sage ich schon mal. Ähm, hm, schwierig, ganz schwierig. Leider. Also eher, ähm, ja... Etwas enttäuscht, muss ich sagen. Nicht nur ein bisschen. Wenn man nach so vielen Jahren der Entwicklungszeit sowas präsentiert, was wirklich nicht gut aussah. Yikes. Aber gut. Wie gesagt, wahrscheinlich werde ich separat nochmal darauf zu sprechen kommen. Irgendwann demnächst. Wollte mir dafür nochmal ein bisschen extra Zeit nehmen. Nicht jetzt hier in dem LP von Three Hopes. Okay, ihr seht's ja schon. Hier geht die Post ab. Und wir fangen an mit... Dimitri, der hat gar nicht so viele Supports. Ich sag mal Dimitri Juri als, äh, als erstes. Klingt verlockend. Let's go. War schon ein guter erster Support, nämlich, muss man sagen. You seem to be staring at me, Yuri. What's wrong? Just thinking how odd it is that you've grown so accustomed to a town like this. Well, I like this place. And its people. There may be a few vagabonds in the darker alleys. That just shows how accepting everyone is. They all greet me with smiles. Despite my being a complete stranger to them. Oh, they'd change their tune pretty quickly if they knew you were the king. Anyway, have you enjoyed your little tour of this garbage heap? Did you get a good look at the town through my eyes or whatever it is you wanted? Yes. And it's also got me thinking about how best to help those of more meager standing. Originally, I thought that establishing medical facilities or investing in the church were the best pathways to this cause. But after seeing the people here, I realize they are not indigents standing around with open hands awaiting salvation. I'd love to unpack your definition of indigent, but yes, they certainly don't take things lying down. Maybe it's idealistic, but I think regents should rule in a way that not just nobles, but everyone can see as reasonable. But to accomplish that, a ruler must take the opportunity to truly listen to the people. <laughs> of course, I can't go around visiting every burg and hamlet personally. I realize this, but I still feel this is the key to true reform. Well, good on you if you actually manage to accomplish that. But it isn't going to be easy. First, you have to give the poor a minimum level of education. Of course, they're already fully capable of telling you when they're hungry or if taxes are too high. But they'll need education to understand the policies and laws established by their lords and hold any kind of thoughtful opinion on them. Education, you say? Yes, that makes a great deal of sense. Problem is, people aren't in the mood to learn anything when they don't know where their next meal is coming from or where they'll sleep that night. Right. Improving quality of life is first and foremost. Education can be built upon that. Sadly, none of this will be cheap. And the current war is doing a fine job of draining our coffers. Which means I need to end it as soon as possible. So the main problem comes down to money, huh? In that case, why not make use of us? If you need funds, I can introduce you to a wealthy merchant or three. And if you need to get some dirty work done, I can lend you a few of my men. All we need in exchange is for you to provide us a little bit of support. I'll not permit you to work evil in my name. And besides which... Tales of how you and your band have eaten lords out of house and home are legend. But you're a different matter entirely, your majesty. If we join forces, my dream is sure to be realized. I swear to never allow you to fall victim to any vile practices. You have my honest word on that. And what is this dream of yours? I'll tell you about it in due time. But for now, your majesty, do you accept my proposal? I will consider it. After spending time together, I've come to want to trust you. I promise it'll be the best decision you ever make. But until then, I'll patiently await your reply. Yuri's Traum. Das wäre nun schon ganz spannend. <lacht> okay, es ist höchst bedauerlich, dass ihr keinen A-Support habt. Das hätte man schon fortführen können, meiner Meinung nach. Aber, papalapap, dann ist es eben so. 
Also Ports hätte ich jetzt erstmal gekonnt skippen, außer es bleiben halt zum Schluss dann viele übrig und wir haben noch gut Zeit. Wir haben einfach generell so viele Supports gerade. Ah, Didi und Catherine ist hier. Der B-Support. Nehmen wir auch mal mit. Hey Didi, I've been thinking. Fargus has really changed lately. How do you mean? I don't know. That's just the feeling I get when I see what goes on in this town. Don't you agree? It's like everyone here trusts you unconditionally. Even though you serve the king of Fargus. Someone they should hate with all their hearts. It must have taken a lot of hard work to rebuild that trust. I'm honestly impressed. The achievement is not my own. His Majesty has been striving towards this for some time now. Huh. When you put it that way, it makes me think he must have been planning it all along. I mean, people used to say he wasn't right in the head when he first chose you as his retainer. But he clearly had reason for doing so. Yes. I can still hear the echoes of their gossip in my ears. The castle was full of it. It led me to ask His Majesty why he saved my life. He replied that neither faith nor birth are of import when a person's life is in danger. <laughs> Lady Rhea has told me the same thing. She saved me once a long time ago, just like Dimitri did for you. Twice, actually. Even though I don't have a religious bone in my body, it's gotta be in their blood to never abandon someone in need. Perhaps His Majesty and the Archbishop aren't as dissimilar as I thought. True. Neither of them seem to let their lofty positions go to their head. They have that in common, too. I'm not sure I follow. Well, despite her role as Archbishop, it's not too uncommon to find Lady Rhea at an orphanage, playing with the children. And Dimitri's the same way, right? I heard he was off teaching some village kids how to fight just the other day. <laughs> yes, that is true. Though I prefer he spend his free time at rest instead. Hey, helping people is calming in its own way, right? So if making sure he's well rested is part of your job, I say you let him do that however he sees fit. Hmm, that's one way of viewing things. I'll think on it. I suppose we probably understand each other better than most, serving such similar leaders. You're suggesting that you and I have much in common as well. Maybe. Either way, it's been a real joy talking to you. We've probably been through a lot of the same ups and downs in life if I had to guess. In time, I bet we could even become friends. So long as our bosses stay in each other's good graces. Agreed. Though, if they were to part ways... Whoa, no need to go there. I think we both know what would happen if they ever chose to cross swords. We'd kill each other without hesitation. I'm sure we have that in common too. Das ist ähnlich hier mit Shamir. Interessant, Catherine ist also kein Stück gläubig. Das ist wirklich nur so, dass sie komplett an Rea hängt. Finde ich ganz interessant. Ich habe auch nie den Vergleich großartig gezogen mit Rea und Dimitri, kann ihn aber total sehen. Interessant. Ich habe da noch nie so drüber nachgedacht, muss ich sagen, über diese Konstellation. Aber es stimmt eigentlich schon. Ich meine, Rea kann auch zur absoluten Bestie werden. Das kann Dimitri genauso. Interessant. Andere Ansätze, aber die Ähnlichkeiten sind nicht von der Hand zu weisen. Hm. Spannend. Machen wir mit Dio und Annette weiter. Oh, how do I even... Annette, what are you doing? oh mein Gott, dieser Größenunterschied. Es ist <lacht> wirklich krass. Oh mein Gott. Oh, Dido. Perfect timing. Got a sec? So, here's my problem. I'm not entirely sure how to use this thing. That is a hero's relic, yes? Yep, it's called Crusher. I know, pretty intimidating. It used to belong to my uncle, but it's really, really heavy. Just lugging it around tires me out like nothing else. Plus, whenever I swing the thing, I feel like it's gonna take me right along with it. It does look heavy, yes. Even without its power as a relic, no armor could possibly stand against such weight. Sounds like I need to build up some muscle then. That's probably gonna take a while, huh? Too bad I'm not already as big and tall as you. You might not be able to change your stature, but physique isn't everything. You know, I think I've heard my father say the same thing. And if that's the case, I'd like to try a few things. Have time to help? Very well. Thanks. Though, on second thought, I probably shouldn't go around swinging a relic at you. I often do my training with a large bag of rocks. That could work. 
Use your entire body, Annette. If you only use your arms, you'll be sent spinning. Okay, like this? Yeah! Exactly. Whew, what a workout. Still, I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of it. Thanks, Dudu. You're a lifesaver. Glad to be of service. I wasn't sure I'd ever be able to wield something like a hero's relic. But you gave me the motivation to try. I'm gonna use this puppy to keep everyone safe. Just you watch. Yes, I... I'm sure you will. Huh? <lacht> okay. Ja gut. Viel Spaß. Annette geht ja extrem ab mit dem Zerschmetterer. Das ist ja kein Geheimnis. Eigentlich kann sie ihn jetzt auch problemlos schwingen. Überhaupt kein Thema. <lacht> Aber The Dew sollte damit besser nicht trainieren. Das äh, wäre auch ein bisschen gefährlich. Oh Gott, wir haben einen Felix und Raphael Support. Den habe ich einfach so ein bisschen geboostet direkt schon. Weil ich fand das so interessant, dass es das überhaupt gibt. Das ist für mich irgendwie so abwegig. Wir wollen die auch nur ansatzweise harmonieren. Könnte witzig werden, ich bin gespannt. <lacht> Wird bestimmt nur humorvoller, oder? Go ahead. Oh boy! But wait. If I eat that, what are you gonna eat? I'll buy something from one of the merchants outside. But that costs money! This is my second helper. Or maybe third. I can't remember. Anyway, if anyone's gonna be paying for extra food, it should be me. In that case, I'll take you up on... Wait, was that thunder? <laughs> nope. Just my stomach. Sorry to scare you. I tell ya. I can't wait for this war to be over so I can eat as much as I want. Uh, look, skipping a full portion won't kill me. Why don't you take half? Wow! You mean it? Thanks a bunch, Meat Buddy. Meat Buddy? Wait, is that me? Yeah, you love it as much as I do. So that makes us Meat Buddies. Bitte hör auf, diesen Begriff zu benutzen. Die kann man leider viel zu falsch interpretieren. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I've got an idea. If there isn't enough to go around, we should go hunting. That way everyone can have their fill. That's actually not a bad idea. I know. Come on, we'll hit up the nearby forest. Petra says there's a ton of game there. Just so happens I have some free time on my hands. So let me finish my lunch and I'll be ready. All right. Me buddies are unstoppable. Oh god. Wait, you forgot your food. Uh, he really is something. Hat das jetzt wirklich durch die ganze Küche geschrien? Ähm reden wir nicht drüber. Oh Gott. Oh, Ash hat sehr viele Supports. Das ist doch grandios. So viele B Supports. Wahnsinn. Ah ja, da kommen auch noch ein paar. Sehr gut. Ich bin sehr froh, dass wir die jetzt noch machen. Da hatte ich mir ein bisschen Angst, dass die eventuell nicht mehr verfügbar sein könnten. Puh. Erleichterung, muss ich sagen. Ah, what lovely weather. Morning walks really are the best. Hm? Is that Ash? I thought it was you. What are you doing out and about so early? Morning, Annette. I've been teaching some of the townspeople how to read and write, as well as some basic math skills. We were all so into it, we didn't notice the time slipping away, and now... Uh, it's suddenly morning. Wow, that's so good of you, Ash. What made you decide to do that? When I went into town earlier, I found a merchant selling medicine at outrageous prices. But people were all snapping it up without even questioning it. Well, I couldn't just stand by and watch it happen. So I called a couple folks over to show them the math. A few more people came over, then a few more. And before I knew it, I found myself becoming their teacher. <laughs> that is so you. But seriously, I think it's amazing. If you ever decide to break out the chalk again, I'd love to help. You can handle reading and math and stuff, and I'll teach him magic and history. Really? That would be great. I enjoy studying a lot. But I don't think I'm very good at actually instructing people. Well, they are two completely different things. Speaking of which, didn't Lord Minato teach you your letters and numbers? Yes, although my father showed me some basic arithmetic as well. 
Leonardo always used to say that study is the path to one's own morality. What does that mean? Well, there's no universal rules for what's right and what's wrong, you know? So you have to find your own morality, something you can believe in and stick to, no matter- He also said a person needs knowledge and education to make that happen. Hmm, I suppose knowledge does grant the power to make sound judgments. I mean, I saw everything differently once I started attending the School of Sorcery and the Officer's Academy. Most of the people here lack the means to attend such institutions, but they still contend with danger and lies on a daily basis. I want to give them the tools to see their way clear of that. So, I guess that's why I'm teaching them. I want to meet them as an equal, not as a Knight of Farkas, but as someone who knows exactly what they're going through. That's incredible, Ash. I think I could learn a thing or two from you too. Ja gut, das war ein recht gewöhnlicher Support. Da kann man noch gar nicht so viel dazu sagen, muss ich sagen. Ähm, schauen wir mal, wie es hier so weitergeht. You saw one too. Glad it wasn't just me. There you are, Ash. I've been worried sick about you. You were white as a sheet during our training earlier, and I was concerned you had taken ill. No, I'm sure that was all just in your head. <lacht> Hmm, that's not your usual carefree smile. I guess I can't hide anything from you, huh? Truth is, I turned my ankle during practice. Thankfully, it's all right, but, well, it reminded me of the time I saw a ghost when I was a little kid. Wait, a proper ghost? Ooh, what did it look like? Did it say anything? What was it wearing? Oh dear, I'm sorry. I let myself get carried away there. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. No, it's all right. I can't let myself live in fear of it forever. So on that day, my brother took sick with a fever. And I went into the mountains to look for medicinal herbs. As I was walking along some unstable ground, I saw a large figure in the fog. And you're sure there wasn't anyone else on the mountain with you that day? Yeah, I was definitely alone up there. Plus, when I tried saying hello, the figure didn't answer. I knew then and there it was a ghost, and in my hurry to escape, my foot slipped, and I turned my ankle. Well, it's important to be careful about where you step. Wait, that's your takeaway? The story doesn't scare you at all? Not really. If I'm honest, I heard a similar tale some time back. A long time ago, a man on a pilgrimage saw a strange, shadowy figure deep in the Ogma Mountains. He panicked and began to scream, thinking at a ghost or some other manner of evil omen. But in truth, it was none of those things. Wait, so if it wasn't a ghost, what was it? <laughs> it was his own shadow reflected in the mist. What? Then maybe what I saw was... I can't say for certain, but it may have simply been a trick of the light. Oh, gosh. I feel silly for being afraid of my own shadow for so many years. It's quite understandable for you to mistake it for a ghost. Especially since you hadn't heard the story about the shadowy figure. Thanks, Mercedes. That makes me feel a lot better. Hey, but if you have time, you should listen to this guy's story. Sorry, whose story? This guy right here. Apparently he saw a real ghost a long time ago. Um, Ash? You are the only other person here. What? Come on. He's standing right next... Huh? You were alone when I found you. Wait, so you never saw him? What does that mean? Was he, uh... <lacht> ja gut, humorvolles Ende für diese Geschichte. Finde ich, find ich ganz nett gemacht, wirklich. Das war doch ganz amüsant. Ach Gott, ihr habt eure Geistergeschichten. Gut, Ash und Ingrid sind dran. Die werden sich wahrscheinlich irgendwie Rittergeschichten erzählen, oder? Hm. What's wrong, Ingrid? You look troubled. Hm? Oh no, it is nothing. Don't worry about it. It has to be something if you're just standing there staring off into space. You can always talk to me, you know. It might not be much help, but... It's this land. It is so fertile. 
I cannot help but be amazed. It is an unusually bountiful region for Fargus, and a beautiful one at that. It doesn't have nearly as much snow as the north, and multiple rivers flow through it. I could scarce take my eyes off of that wheat field we passed earlier. My home does not have anything as lovely as that. It's nothing but a barren, rocky wasteland, and the soil we do have is so poor even the weeds disdain it. We have tilled the ground, removed rocks, and sowed seeds in hopes that our descendants might one day benefit, but... Well, who knows how long it would take for us to have large, fruitful fields like the ones here. Our blood, sweat, and tears will drench the land, serving as nourishment for those who come long after. You may not accomplish it in your lifetime, but the effort will definitely pay off down the road. Or, that's what I think, at least. Those are the words of King Lug, yes? From Lug and the Maiden of Wind. That is one of my favorites. Yeah, hearing you talk about your homeland actually reminded me of another part. At one point, it uses the phrase, barren as the land of Dagda. I'm sure it's just some term the poets created long after Lug, but it got me curious. So I went and tracked down a travel journal about Dagda. I haven't read many travel journals. What did it say? It spoke of a crop that grew easily, even in their infertile soil. Apparently it's really filling and tastes amazing when boiled or baked. It sounds too good to be true. Like a crop out of a fairy tale. If only I knew what it was called. Shamir might be able to tell you more about it. My homeland would greatly benefit from cultivating a plant like that. I can't say for certain if it'll actually grow there, but it's probably worth looking into. And if there's any way I can help, just say the word. I am sure a royal knight has better things to do than worry about the problems of House Galatea. This isn't about my station. I'm just a pal lending a hand. Besides, I grew up poor. I know what it's like to go hungry. No one should ever have to experience that. Thank you, Ash. In that case, our first task is to look deeper into this miracle crop of yours. I wish we could wait until this war is over, but that would take too long. I want to learn all I can about it as soon as possible. Oh, this is so exciting. Agreed. Now we just have to survive long enough to uncover its secrets. Das war auch ein ganz schöner Support. Hatte natürlich auch Rittergeschichten mit drin, aber nur jetzt in dem Kontext in diesem Look. Ich fand das ganz nett, dass sie Shamir noch erwähnt haben, dass sie sich ja da auskennen müsste. Du hast nur einen C-Support, aber macht ja nichts. Ah ja, Sylvain. Sylvain und Ignaz, das alleine finde ich auch schon interessant. Ist auch der einzige Support bei ihm gerade. Machen wir natürlich. Auch ungewöhnlich. Haben einiges Ungewöhnliches hey, diesmal. Ignaz, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, uh, hello, Sylvain. Do you need something? Yeah, I actually... Oh, were you painting? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no, it's fine. What can I do for you? Actually, I was hoping you could take a look at this painting I brought back last time I was home. Hmm. This style is rarely seen in Fargus. It might be the work of an imperial painter. Oh, interessant. Agreed. I don't think I've seen this style of brushwork used much in the kingdom. My father's first wife was an imperial noble, so maybe it was hers? I never knew that. Still, it's quite stunning. I know, right? That lady's really something. Uh, I didn't mean the woman herself. Though, of course, she's lovely too. The features of her face suggest such kindness. She actually resembles Lady Rhea in a way. Oh, ich hab's ich fast schon ein bisschen gedacht. The thing is, I have no idea who she is or if she even exists in real life. Is that why you came to me? To see if I could uncover her identity? Pretty much. I really love this thing, so it's been bugging me for years. I thought maybe you could finally scratch the itch for me. I mean, everybody knows you're the go-to guy for anything related to art. Well, I'll do what I can, but please try not to get your hopes up. There's still a great deal I don't know. Though I must admit, my curiosity has been piqued as well. Oh, really? Thanks. I wouldn't have the first clue about how to go about this on my own. I mean... I'd at least have something to go on if it was a religious painting. But us kingdom folk pretty much only care about fighting, you know? And our art books are... Well, let's just say they're lacking and leave it at that. 
Yes, I'm well aware. Sadly, while religious art has continued to thrive and grow, the same can't be said for its secular counterparts. I do get the impression that this portrait may actually be related to the Church of Saros, though. You think? I don't know. I haven't noticed any of the usual elements of a Saros composition. As I'm sure you know, paintings of legendary and sacred figures all share a certain pattern. Which is to say, they're frequently depicted with their associated symbols. Yeah, like St. Saros with swords and St. Sethelene with fish. But I don't see anything even close to that here. Look at the birds. Don't they seem strangely prominent to you? I guess, now that you mention it. Okay, so who was associated with birds? St. Macuel, maybe? No, St. Macuel was a guy. This is nothing like how he's usually depicted, either. I didn't expect you to be so knowledgeable, Sylvain. Uh, no offense. To be honest, I always thought the two of us lived in entirely different worlds. <laughs> Come on! You should know me better than that. I'm the biggest art connoisseur in all of Fargus. Though, I admit, at first I... I only studied it to impress the ladies. <laughs> Sorry. I guess we still live in different worlds after all. <laughs> Natürlich muss das damit noch enden, aber sehr spannender Support. Ich bin wirklich froh, den mitgenommen zu haben. Dieses Gemälde hier, das ist spannend mit so ein bisschen Background auch nochmal zu Rea. Klar. Coole Sache. Wirklich cool. Finde ich super. Ah ja, hier haben wir glaube ich jetzt erstmal nichts mehr. Aber Annette hat immer noch fleißig Supports. Annette und Ingrid und ach, Lorenz und Ignaz auch noch. Dann machen wir doch mal Ignaz direkt nochmal. Und dann ist Lorenz dran. Könnte auch witzig werden. <sighs> Am I actually a good knight? I feel like I'm hindering more than helping most of the time. What's wrong, Ignaz? You look sad. Oh, hey, Annette. Sorry to make you worry. I was just pondering some things you don't need to worry about. Huh. Say, you're Gustav's daughter, right? Yes. Uh, why exactly? Well, Gustav is said to be one of the finest knights in all of Fargus. So... Listen, do you have a minute to talk? Of course. What's on your mind? I've been thinking about something recently. I... I don't know if I'm any use as a knight. What? Come on, Ignaz. You help us out plenty. Everyone relies on you. Do you, though? I mean, I'm a knight, but I don't have any particular skill where I'm outstanding. That's, um, why I was hoping I could learn a thing or two from stories about your father. Gustav is a legendary knight who served generations of Fargus kings, after all. Okay, this is making me blush, and I'm not even the subject of the flattery. But hey, I'm happy to tell you what I know. Oh, thank you. In that case, let me dive right in. So, um, what sort of training does he normally do? He doesn't go a day without training with both the sword and spear. And I'm serious, I don't think he's taken a day off in decades. Interesting. So, he must have been made a royal knight in recognition for all his hard work, right? I'm not sure if it's from hard work exactly. Okay, so this might just be one of my uncle's jokes, but my father started working as a soldier at the royal castle when he was even younger than we are now. And 40 or so years ago, apparently he saw the previous king, who was just a kid at the time, fall off one of the ramparts. So he threw his spear and pinned the young king's clothes to the wall, which saved his life. Anyway, that's apparently what got him promoted. That's, um... Well, it's so specific that I can't entirely dismiss it as a joke. After that, my father changed his training regimen to include spearing falling leaves onto tree trunks. Hundreds of them, every day, I'm told. He does all that just for training? I don't think I could pin one leaf, not to mention hundreds. Sorry, Annette. I think I've set my sights too high. Das sind ja ganz wilde Erzählungen zu Gustav, der eigentlich gar nichts taugt. Einfach mal so richtig schlechte Einheit. Oh Mann, ey. Oh Gott. Annette und Lorenz. Sehen, was da so abgeht. Ah, Annette. Good day to you. I see you remain as sprightly and sweet as a newly bloomed flower. <sighs> Hi, Lorenz. Uh, oh my, have I done something to invite your displeasure? You just kind of brought back a bad memory from a long time ago. Back at the School of Sorcery? 
There was this one time this noble guy made fun of me. What manner of cur would dare do such a thing? If a noble ever presumes to mock your genius, point me in their direction so I might give them a taste of their own medicine. Well, then pop the cork on that medicine bottle and take a nice big gulp. Hold a moment. Are you implying that I am the one who mocked you? I'm not implying it. I'm saying it. You made fun of me the first time we ever met. You were all like, I say, you there, this is no place for a child. Now run along to your parents before I summon the watch. We simply cannot abide a common scullery maid wandering these hallowed halls. Why, we'd be made a laughing stock. You thought I was some lost kid, and you called me a scullery maid. Yes, I do seem to vaguely recall the incident. Oh, so that scullery maid was you. Uh, uh, that is, you were in fact no maid at all, but the noble niece of Baron Dominic. You have my sincerest apologies for the error. Pray forgive my impertinent tongue. Oh, it's fine. I mean, it would be silly to keep hanging on to a grudge like that, right? If we'd had but another chance to properly converse back then, I'm certain the matter would have been cleared up with some ease. But sadly, that day was both our first and last opportunity to meet. Now that you mention it, I don't remember seeing you around after that. Yes, because my father swiftly summoned me back to Alliance territory. After the King's death, the Kingdom had become too unstable for me to remain there any longer. Oh, right. That was right around the tragedy of Dusker. My father worried that relations between the Kingdom and Alliance might become strained. As such, I was forced to leave school mere days after my arrival. Huh. Kind of funny how we keep ending up together like this. Yes, it seems fate strives to keep us together, whether at the School of Sorcery, the Academy, or here. And I, for one, look forward to seeing what the future holds. Me too. But if you ever call me a kid or a maid again, no amount of summoning the Watch is going to save you. I swear on my life, those words shall never cross my lips again. And by way of apology for my odious blunder, I hereby swear to come to your aid if ever you require it. Just say the word, and I, Lawrence Hellman Gloucester, will hurry to your side. Oh, 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 oh. <lacht> <lacht> Dieses Ende einfach mit der Lache. Oh Gott. Naja, auch kein schlechter Support an sich. Ein bisschen Hintergrund auch nochmal. Stimmt ja, das ist auch bei ihm im Profil drin, auch in äh, Three Houses. Erinnere ich mich, dass er mal in dieser Magieakademie war. Schön, dass sie das nochmal äh, aufgegriffen haben. Weiter geht es mit Ingrid. It's fine, we're fine. Everything's fine here. Just gonna grab it and run right back out. Good evening, Annette. <lacht> oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, Ingrid, it's just you. Sorry about that. Guess I'm a little jumpy right now. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. But if I may, what are you doing out here so late at night? I forgot my book in the mess hall and came back to grab it. What a coincidence. I was also headed to the mess hall to look for something. Oh, yay! Then we can go together. Seriously, it feels so much better if you were with me. Not entirely sure why that's the case, but okay. Oh gosh, it's so dark. Ah! What was that? I think it came from the grass over there. Hmm? Probably just another night owl. I wonder if it's... Annette, stop! You're going to run into that pile of... Ow! Who put these crates here? Crates. Oh, Annette. Well, that was quite the ordeal, but we finally made it. Thanks, Ingrid. I'm glad nobody got hurt, aside from you in those crates. But if I may, Annette, are you afraid of the dark? Uh, yeah, actually. I've been afraid of it my whole life. I give anything not to be, but I just can't seem to shake it. What about you, Ingrid? Aren't you scared? I mean, a ghost could pop out of anywhere and ghost you. The dark does not really bother me, no. And as I have never seen a ghost, I'm not afraid of them. But doesn't it scare you to think about it? I mean, just imagine some icky dead person rising from the earth and coming at you with big, chattery teeth. Certainly, we had such stories back home in Galatea. 
My brothers loved to tell them when I was a child, but if they were true, we would not be able to walk to breakfast without bumping into a horde of the dead. Huh. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But it's still hard to get the idea out of my head. I personally think it would be wonderful if the dead became ghosts and we could see them again. But when people die, that's it. We can't see or speak to them ever again. Yeah, when someone dies, they're gone forever. But that's all the more reason to treasure what little time we get, right? Agreed. We have only one life to live after all. In that case, I'm gonna walk back all by myself. Are you sure? We went through quite the struggle just to make it here. If I want to conquer my fears, I'd better do it while I'm alive. The dark is still pretty terrifying, but I'm gonna push through it. <laughs> I could learn a thing or two from her optimism. We only live once. Hm. Ja. Das stimmt schon. Von der Lebenseinstellung finde ich Annette eigentlich auch klasse. Da hat Ingrid absolut recht. Okay, ja, schon so viel Zeit wieder vergangen. Was Wahnsinn, ey, mit den Supports. Das ist schon krass. Ich habe immer noch so viel. Ich überlege jetzt gerade mal, was könnte dann auch ablaufen und was wird wahrscheinlich erstmal nicht ablaufen. Also ich meine, sämtliche Supports mit uns sind wahrscheinlich nicht so bedroht, nehme ich mal an. Okay. Zumindest hoffe ich das mal. Dass wir es halt auch nicht komplett übertreiben, jedes Mal hier, ne? Ja, der B-Support mit Bernie hier, den könnte man noch machen. Raphael und Ignaz, okay. Flane hat wahrscheinlich auch nur mit uns gerade einen Support. Ach, nee, mit Doro. Ach, nehmen wir auch den Flane und Doro Support mit. Das finde ich nicht schlecht. Let's go. Dorothea, I have it. You have what? I have learned more about the story you mentioned the other day. The one regarding the song that ended a war. That's incredible. How did you manage it? I've been asking around myself, but I haven't learned a thing. I actually asked my brother. Or, to be more specific, I just so happened to stumble across it in one of his books. I see. And what did it say? It is the story of a woman who ended a war with a song. This took place a short while after the Empire emerged victorious from the War of Heroes. The brother of an Imperial noble started a conflict regarding the succession of their territory. It was a minor struggle at first, but gradually the other neighboring lords became cut up as well. It became quite the event. One thing spiraled into another, and soon they were on the cusp of a war that threatened to splinter the very empire itself. Nobles are always like that, no matter the era. At the time, one woman was very worried about the state of affairs. A childhood friend of the two brothers on opposite sides of the struggle. Oh, now that's a development right out of the storybooks. She made her way to the battlefield, which was on the brink of exploding into violence, stood between the two armies, and began to sing. She filled her every word with the hope that the brothers would not be driven to fight. And it went like this. I remember with fondness Days long past with those I love With warmth in my heart I think of them And sing to the stars up above Hands once linked now carry swords Filled with rage and bloody And with their smiles forgotten They seek the sweet release of death. The sound of her voice in song moved not only the hearts of the two brothers, but of their armies as well. Soon, they all dispersed and returned to their homes. Having settled their differences, the brothers petitioned the Emperor to change their territories. So that there would be no lingering grudge, they asked to be given lands at the east and west ends of the Empire with the capital betwixt. And that is the tale of how House Benya and House Menya came to be. You know, I just realized something. The name of the Middle Front Opera Company means Friendship at the Center. It's taken from a festival of singing and dancing that was held in the capital long ago in the hopes of fostering peace. Maybe the origins of this festival are found in the story you just told me. Do you truly think so? 
noble houses divided with the capital between them? Singing and dancing in the center for peace? I don't think it's a coincidence. Now that you say it, I find I must agree. Which would mean that you, Dorothea, diva of the Middle Frog Opera Company, might use your talent to bring about the end of war. That would be quite something were it to come to pass. Hmm, I wonder. But let's put old tales aside for now and continue our lessons, shall we? Perhaps if we pray and sing for peace, happiness really will find us all. Oh, auch sehr schön. Das ist auch so die beste Art und Weise, ein bisschen Lore zu vermitteln, finde ich wieder. Das mag ich dann doch immer sehr. Ich glaube, wir haben noch den Bernie und Marianne Support, oder? Ja, wir haben auch noch äh, Bernie und Petra haben wir auch noch. Ich glaube, ich mache mal damit weiter. Habe ich ein bisschen mehr Angst, dass der eventuell schneller weg sein könnte. Ach, es war sogar A-Support bei Marianne. Gut, ich habe ja gesagt, ich mache halt keine A-Supports, dann passt es so. war ist getting more brutal with each passing day. If I don't learn to adapt, I'll never survive. Maybe if I work on my bow skills, I can get good enough to fight from a safe distance. I wonder if Petra would teach me. I mean, she doesn't hate me, so that must mean we sort of get along. You are needing my help, Bernadetta? <laughs> Petra! Were you there this whole time? <laughs> For enough time. I am also thinking we are getting along. You do? Aw, Petra! Um, but I mean, I actually could use your help. I want to get better with the bows, so I was thinking maybe you could give me some intensive training? But I mean, you really don't have to. It's fine. Of course. It would give me delight. But there is one concern I am having. Oh. It's the fact that I'm horribly untalented, isn't it? No, you are not without talent. I have seen you being very light upon your feet. But it is only when you are feeling threatened. So, for you to have the greatest improvement, I must be giving you fear when I am training you. Um, okay. But maybe you could be threatening in a non-threatening way? That could be done. But then you would not be having improvement. Terror is what you are needing for this. <laughs> I don't think I like the sound of that. Oh my god. Then we must be forgetting this idea. I do not want your heart to be giving out. Hey, come on! I'm not completely afraid of applying myself, you know? If we are doing this intensive training, you will have to be facing the trial of wind. I am thinking you lack the readiness you need. The trial of wind? You know what? Do your worst. My heart can take whatever you dish out and... and chew it into little tiny pieces. Hmm. <sighs> Very well. Once we have our beginning, I will not relent. I hope you have offered your prayers today. <laughs> On second thought, maybe we should discuss this just a little more before we... Gotta see me! Petra, enough! Cease! Your arrows are just one big blur! Now it is time for seriousness. 100 arrows from behind. I thought we were already serious! Life. Am I dead? You have done it, Bernadetta. You are the survivor of Bridget's fearsome trial by wind. What does that even mean? This training is meant to be testing our resolve, just as the spirits do. Warriors of Bridget who are surviving the trial receive the blessings of the wind spirits. You have passed. Now the spirits will be with you always and guiding your arrows. I passed? Yes! You go, Bernie! But actually, I'm just happy to get your approval here. It feels... nice. It is the approval of the wind spirits, not mine. But I am sharing in your happiness all the same. <lacht> Einerseits ein sehr typischer Bernie-Support, andererseits auch wieder ganz spannend. Man weiß ja, dass die Leute in Bridge eben an diese Elementargeister denken. Haben sie auch ganz schön mit reingebracht. Das ist immer schön. Man tobt sich zumindest mit den ganzen Details immer sehr viel aus. Das muss man schon sagen. Okay, ich glaube bei den Supports, die wir jetzt noch haben, die rennen uns nicht davon. Die können wir auch, denke ich, im nächsten Kapitel noch machen. Hoffe ich zumindest. Ich weiß nicht, wie es mit A-Supports ist. Aber ich glaube, wir haben noch etwas länger Zeit. Ich hoffe es, wie gesagt. Ansonsten schreibt mir gerne und ich äh, gucke, was man machen kann. 
Irgendwann werde ich die eben alle mal zusammenfassen. Aber ja. Gut, Leute. So, ich war ja gar nicht mehr zu sehen hier. <lacht> Na gut, das hat jedenfalls Spaß gemacht. Und wir kommen weiter. Ja, die nächste Hauptmission. Ich weiß nicht, wie viele Kapitel das gibt. Aber spoilert mich nicht. Das hatte ich schon mal erwähnt. Hm. Na ja, gut, das ist ja erst ein neuer Teil losgegangen. Also vermutlich gibt es noch ziemlich viele. Na gut, dann haben wir mal wieder eine neue Mission vor uns beim nächsten Mal. Bis dahin.